our lead story of the day is regarding swim champ Riley Gaines being attacked by a radical trans mob and being forced to barricade after one of her speeches. Folks, this is wild and insane. Before we jump into everything, make sure you support a true American patriot by hitting like and subscribe and leave us a short, sweet comment down below. Your help and support would be greatly appreciated. Well, swimming champ Riley Gaines spent a harrowing night barricaded in a safe room on Thursday after radical transgender activists swarmed her when she visited San Francisco State University to advocate for the rights of female athletes. Gaines, a former University of Kentucky star who was deprived of an NCAA award by Leah Thomas, the University of Pennsylvania swimmer who claims to be female, even though he's a biological male and competes against women, was at the school as part of the Turning Point USA event. Video on social media, which we will show you in a moment, shows Gaines being hustled to safety by police officers as a mob of radical transgender activists follow her shouting trans rights are human rights. Quote, the prisoners are running the asylum at SFSU, Gaines tweeted. This is proof that women need sex protected spaces. Still only further assures me I'm doing the right thing. When they want you silent, speak louder. Folks, this video clip is wild. Let's go ahead and roll it. So she's leaving the room in which she was giving a speech. Lights are going on and off. People are shouting and she's being escorted now by police out of the classroom. Folks, this is supposedly the tolerant left, right? That's all for diversity, equity, and inclusion. I don't see any of that here. I see a mob, a woke mob, that says trans rights are human rights, which I don't know how they get to that logic and that linear conclusion, but that's for another video. Sitting there, pushing back against police officers, going after a speaker at a university, by the way, which is supposed to be all about free speech and dialogue, and you can't even have that anymore. Why? Because you had the education system become a factory of indoctrination of the woke and progressive left. And this is what now our universities have turned into. Insane, absolutely insane, but they're going to do everything they can to silence you folks. And that's why you just have to speak up. Even if you aren't racist or anything like that, and they're still going to call you racist, you might as well just say what you're going to say, because this is how they're going to treat you. Even what you're saying is true, objectively true. They will still attack you and go after you and your family. And we're seeing that happening to Matt Walsh right now of the Daily Wire. Well, Gaines had begun her speech on protecting female athletes from unfair competition when protesters burst into the room where she was speaking. As she was being escorted to safety, she was physically assaulted, she said. Quote, I'm okay currently, but an hour and a half later, I'm still barricaded in a room with ambush ambushers on the outside yelling and threatening violence, Gaines said. As police escorted me out of the event space to my current location, I was hit physically twice by what I presume was a male individual. This only assures me I am doing the right thing. What's astonishing here is what she's saying is true about protecting female athletes from unfair competition. As somebody that played ice hockey for over 25 years, you do not want men and women to compete against each other in a physical sport like that. You can look at mixed martial arts like the UFC. It's not fun watching a guy destroy a woman, which has happened. I'll show you that clip. I mean, we see this time and time and time again, just natural biology playing its course out of women getting destroyed by men. I'm not trying to degrade women, but there's just biological factors of evolution playing into effect here of why some women, heck, all women should not compete in men's sports. Like there's some sports where you can compete against each other, right? Like pool or something or bowling. Okay. But not 
contact sports. It doesn't work that way. But for some reason, they continue to want this to happen, which we all know the end result of how that's going to be. It was unclear how long Gaines was barricaded in the room, but the event began at 7 p.m. local time, and at midnight, police were still dispersing the protesters. They couldn't even get this thing under control. Turning Point USA founder Charlie Kirk blasted the protesters behind the ugly incident. Quote, this is unacceptable at an American college campus. Even in San Francisco, well, I mean, Charlie, should we expect anything else from San Francisco? It's San Francisco in probably the biggest dominated leftist state in the union. There's a reason why people are fleeing the masses from the state of California, going to Texas and Florida and other places. OK, and it's not really just California, to be quite frank. It's basically every major city that's ran by the left and Democrat party that people are getting the heck out because of things like this. Pray for Riley Gaines and for our brave students at SFSU. Gaines's agents, Ellie Bremer said Gaines will not back down from the mob. Quote, instead of a thoughtful discussion tonight at SFSU, Riley was violently accosted, shouted at, physically assaulted, and barricaded in a room by protesters. It is stunning that in America in 2023, it is acceptable for biological male students to violently assault a woman for standing up for women's rights. There's some irony. This will not stop Riley from boldly uh, educating people of the dangers of biological males in women's sports. She will continue to speak the truth against the radical left that no longer understands the difference between men and women. Absolutely correct. There is no difference to them. And if there is a difference to them, they can't even explain what that difference is. And thus, they couldn't even explain what a woman is, which we've seen from time and time again of Matt Walsh just questioning the progressive left constantly about what is a woman? What is a woman? And it's about their feelings. If you notice, every time they're asked this question, it's, well, I heard it from somebody else or somebody told me this. Somebody affirmed my belief. Somebody made me feel this way. It's not about feelings. Again, Ben Shapiro has that quote, facts don't care about your feelings, a famous quote, but it's true. Objective facts, truth matters. And the second you diminish the truth, the second you start going after falsehoods is the second that your society cripples. It is the reason why societies will fall from the inside out and be collapsed. And that's exactly why we wrote the book, as I'm plugging so often, Trojan Horse, How the Left is Destroying America. And you're seeing one of the examples here. We cover the education system. We cover CRT. We cover how the indoctrination of the left is basically pumping out a factory of kids and students in the school system. And you're seeing the ramifications. You're seeing the end product of that indoctrination with this woke mob here and what they're doing to speakers not enabling them to have that right of free speech because they don't want you to have any rights. They want to force you to believe in their ideology. There is nothing more radical than certain extremists of a specific faith. And what I mean by that, again, somebody who's a Christian, is that the radical left mob is more religious than you and I are. Whether you're Jewish, you're Muslim, you're Sikh, you're Buddhist, you're Christian, whatever it may be, they are more religious than you are. The reason why is because they don't even question what they're doing. They don't question their thinking. They don't question their motives. They don't question their actions. They just do it because they're in full belief. Whereas a Christian, a Jew, we tend to sit there and struggle with God. We sit there and struggle with our faith every now and then because there's constant doubt seeping in and out from many factors, not just from the individual, but also your social milieu. And what's happening here is they don't question those things. And when you sit there and stump them through a debate or dialogue that sits there and makes them question about it, they sit there and they just shut you down. And they don't want to hear about it because what will happen is if they have to accept that truth that is objective, by the way, between male and female, then their whole worldview is shattered. And not just their worldview, but their feelings, what they set up for themselves in terms of their life, the people they put around them, everything would be flipped, up, flipped upside down. It would be no different than you realizing, even though this would be false, you realizing that Christ never existed. It wasn't true. Like it wasn't the true God. Okay, obviously, as Christians, we believe certain aspects of our faith, but I'm just using, utilizing it as an analogy of us being told that Christ was not real, never existed, and that ended up being a fact, just say theoretically, that is the same idea of a trans person or somebody of the LGBTQ community being basically disproven of their ideology and being told to accept that truth, even though that truth is, in fact, the truth because it's objective. No difference than the sunrise in the east and sets in the west, right? No difference. The moon is always going to be there. There's certain objective truths that we can always hold on to because they are always holding true, but they don't want to accept that. I hope you enjoyed that clip from the Bald Brad Show. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all our future content.